type of object it is. Um, this one would be import das underscore dress. Um, and so that's great. Excellent. Um, but uh, DAS um, basically will give you a number of selection tags which will allow you to quickly select different areas of your figure. If we scroll down here with our alt middle mouse button um, we can see that uh, our feet are just selected and nothing else. Um, in DAS here, or in Cinema here, we can also use our radio buttons here to turn off the uh, editor view of the dress and then we can actually see that, yeah, it really is just the feet selected. Um, coming into some of these other tags, um, we come here, we can select the eyelashes and this is great um, for quickly isolating objects. Um, in the soft image workflow, um, you're going to need to separate the head from the body and you're going to need to separate the eyes into individual objects and separate the uh, the jaw and the tongue as well. Um, soft image likes its eyes, its tongue, its lower jaw, upper jaw, and the head mesh all separated into separate objects. Um, and we'll get into that workflow in a later tutorial as well. So these, uh, these selection tags really help. Um, they also help in your ZBrush workflow because they allow you to create polygroups that you can then um, hide and select at will so you can individualize your sculpting real fast um, without having to actually create all the polygroups in ZBrush um, yourself which uh, can get kind of tedious in ZBrush. Um, its controls are a little um, on the interesting side. Alright, so anyway um, with the skin foot texture selected um, we can go ahead and get rid of its reflection map. It doesn't need to have any reflection. Um, we can do the same thing for the skin torso, get rid of its reflection map. Um, a lot of these materials that came in by default will also have a couple of issues like um, environment maps. Um, and what environment mapping does is it um, creates a fake texture um, that can be used with the reflection map to create um, the illusion that there is a scene uh, wrapping around a character. Um, we don't need those kind of illusions in Cinema 4D. We can easily create a sky or uh, using Grayscale Gorilla's kits. Uh, Grayscalegorilla.com is a great tutorial site for uh, learning a lot about Cinema 4D. I'm going to turn back on the dress by the by. Um, but um, yeah, they are a great site. They also have great plugins. Um, we'll use a few in this tutorial. Um, I'll also show you a different way that you can generate um, the same sort of HDR texture without actually using the uh, Grayscale Gorilla Kit. Give you an idea of how they actually created it for you. Um, but we're basically coming through the materials here one by one and we're turning off certain things that we don't need. Um, this dress, for instance, has a deep reflection and we'll get back to that in a couple of seconds. We'll leave that on so you can see what that looks like. Um, but uh, now that we've taken care of the uh, the skin torso or um, uh, the different skin parameters here, uh, we can go ahead and add uh, some extra stuff to them. We can go ahead and render real quick and see how we're looking. Okay, she's looking great. Um, let's go ahead and take care of that fong issue. So we can right click on the actual um, mesh that we want to manipulate and uh, the first thing you'll see is uh, Cinema 4D has this concept of tags. Uh, they're basically like uh, modifiers in 3ds Max. Um, they allow you to uh, modify the mesh and do different things to it. Um, we're going to use a Fong tag which basically adds um, some, s some soft shading between edges uh, to a character. Um, and uh, usually doesn't require you to really do much in, um, in the actual tag itself. Uh, it just kind of sort of works out the box. If we render, as you can see, um, we've got very smooth model now. Pretty impressive. Um, 
we need to work on these eyes. Um, the issue with the eyes here, um, and they're dictated by the cornea material, which is mapped here to the uh, cornea selection. If we go to the cornea selection, I just, I'm just actually mousing over these. Um, you may or may not see the tool tips. Um, my screen capture software doesn't really show them, but if you mouse over, um, Cinema 4D gives you great tool tips about uh, what is actually what your a object actually is. This is telling me that it's actually a polygon selection and uh, that um, it's using the uh, cornea selection, or, or that its name is cornea selection. If I click on it, as you can see, it's, it is cornea selection. Uh, this triangle lets me know that it's a polygon selection. Uh, it also lets me know it's a polygon selection here. And if I double click on it, I can see which polygons it selects, which happen to be the cornea. And then what would happen in a uh, a default cinema workflow if you were to build this character from scratch is uh, once you had the cornea polygon selected you could actually apply a material you could drag a material straight onto them or drag the material straight onto the mesh and drag the uh, selection into this selection field here and you could actually apply that material strictly to that selection locking it off from affecting the rest of the body which is great um, here in the cornea um, DAS um, actually uses uh, refraction in its shader properties um, plus a little bit of a reflection to um, sort of give this um, give the cornea a little bit of that uh, that kind of filmy kind of a uh, translucent cellular uh, quality that that the eye has so in order to achieve that here, um, what we're going to want to do is turn on our transparency channel. And if we go into our transparency channel, we can already see that Daz has given us an image that it's currently using for transparency. Um, the only problem with this image, of course, if we click on it, once again, we can hit we can hit this up button to actually go back into our material properties now. And if we click on the uh, the actual texture here, where it uh, says its file name. Uh, we can see that the uh, the texture is um, it's black to uh, to white. Um, the transparency channel um, basically uses this white to black. Um, it needs to be basically flipped. Um, so we'll set our black point to one, and we'll set our white point to zero, and that'll flip it. It'll invert its uh, its trans uh, its, its transparency. Um, for the transparency channel itself, we'll also set it up to uh, pure white so that when it multiplies with the underlying uh, texture it uh, it basically creates the transparency that we're looking for and now if we render um, this scene we'll see that um, now we've got uh, the translucency that we're looking for beautiful um, if we render again you'll also notice that um, there is uh, a fake reflection map we actually don't have anything to really reflect in this scene but uh, Daz has created a uh, fake reflection map for us um, it's one of the things I wanted to show you uh, once we flip that texture around um, basically in cinema uh, we're gonna create this procedurally um, so we really don't need um, this this actual map um, we can use uh, our basic transparency and uh, our basic refraction here actually we can up it to uh, oh, 1.05 um, to give us that refraction that uh, we, we got in DAS. So now we have much finer control over our refraction. We can make our eyes more refractive, less refractive. Uh, we can go ahead and clear out our texture channel here. And now um, we can actually create our refraction um, ourselves. Um, our, our reflectivity and our irises ourselves uh, through more realistic parameters here. Um, so that's good. We uh, render this out again. Great. A um, lot less detail now, but uh, we'll add that detail back in, as you'll soon see. Uh, for our eyelashes, um, as I said, uh, Daz deigned to um, not bring in our eyelashes. 
Uh, first things first, we'll set the uh, the color to um, white, uh, and then we'll um, actually add in our color texture using our um, diffuse channel here. And uh, you'll get this dialog a lot in Cinema. Um, we haven't saved our project yet. That's what we'll do next. But uh, when you save your project, um, if the texture is not in your project path, uh, Cinema will kindly ask you if you want to create a copy at the texture path so that uh, the texture will be relative to the project. Um, making textures relative to your project is pretty easy in uh, Cinema 4D. All you do is create a uh, a file called TEX or a folder called TEX and paste your pictures in there and uh, it won't come up with this dialog um, but n we're not going to do that here we're going to continue to use our absolute paths and uh, if we render now we'll see that we've got our eyelashes but we don't have our alpha so to create alpha we just need to create an alpha channel and we need to load our texture field here with um, the uh, JPEG alpha alpha version of um, our diffuse map here. Daz is kindly rendered out for us, and we won't copy to the project location. Um, and the alpha's default soft mapping and image mapping uh, and image alpha um, uh, properties have done a perfect job for us. It's basically taken the black, made it transparent. Uh, taking the white made it an opaque. Uh, the softness has created a sort of a nice uh, anti-aliasing kind of sort of edge around the um, around the lashes, and uh, that's pretty much um, given us exactly what we need. Uh, now we've actually got her lashes back. She's looking amazing now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save our project here. Um, Click Save As, and um, depending upon your workflow, if you're using with a if you're using a multi pipeline workflow where um, maybe Maya or 3ds Max is your main application, then it's possible, or even Soft Image your main application, it's possible you might have a uh, a project set up where it's generated a whole bunch of folders for you. Uh, Maya, for instance, generates FBX folders, and that's kind of where I got the workflow idea to actually create folders, separate folders from my different formats. To keep everything organized a little bit, um, but uh, since I'm using Cinema 4D and it's an, it's my main app, I like to keep my main uh, Cinema 4D files actually in a folder on the root of my project. So right here is perfectly fine. We'll save this out, and uh, now we're saved. Now we can hit uh, the window, the common window shortcut, Control S, every uh, periodically, every five, ten or so minutes to uh, just keep ourselves uh, you know on the up and up and uh, make sure that if we get any strange crashes or out of memory errors which um, happens more often than you would think with um, 3D design um, as these programs use a lot of memory um, we won't have to worry about uh, losing too much of our information um, to be fair uh, we can also go into our edit preferences here and we can go into our files and uh, we can actually set it up to create backup copies and we can set it to auto save and we can set it to do it every five minutes as well and uh, limit it down to about five copies or so however many copies you think um, will work out for you and we can save them directly to our project directory that way you know if something unforeseen happens we can also go back to the uh, most recent autosave I know a lot of people aren't as religious about uh, that control s as I am you know it's a conscience conscious effort uh, this is more of an unconscious effort um, and it'll save you a lot of drama and uh, head pulling hair pulling uh, if something unforeseen happens in uh, one of your render settings or uh, a plugin that you might use uh, from somebody else. All right, great. All right, so let's zoom out. And uh, she is looking absolutely gorgeous, but uh, we can go one step further here. 
um, 